the founders of Pine Acres, um, Mr. Leroy Bird and Mr. James Rogers, uh, Mr. Uh, Forrest Newkirk, Mr. Kiever Jackson, and Mr. Alec Bullock and my father. Interestingly enough, I think about this sometimes, I saw all of these men at least once a month. And the reason why I saw them, my mother was a barber and they had to get the haircut. They had to come into the barber shop. And I worked in the barber shop. I didn't think about the influence of the barber shop on my life because I used to shine shoes in the barber shop. My, I think my mom kind of kept me there to keep me out of trouble. But, but if you know anything about a barber shop, African American barber shop, you know, you get politics, you get finance, all different kinds of discussions at the barbershop. So I was familiar with all of these men. And most of them, when they would come into the barbershop, a lot of their conversations ended up being around community and community involvement and what was going on politically. So that's sort of the history that I have when it comes to uh, an influence in regards to being community community minded, and I think that when I look at that, I think that and my father's com passion for community service produced a, a great blend for me, where my affinity for community service just it, it's just what it is. So I've sort of evolved over the years that way. When I think about the story of Pine Acres, I think about the the idea of during that time, uh, Pine Acres, uh, when you look at the, the incorporation, was in August 1962. And that period of time in this country was a segregated society. And when I think about how Pine Acres evolved from a standpoint of a corporate, corporate effort, because these men, what they did was, with this idea of having this community building where they wanted uh, to have uh, what, what at that term and what is termed now a social intercourse among ourselves because of segregation, we were sort of a compressed society. We didn't have outside of the, the boundaries here a lot of interaction with people who were different than us. And these men had this idea that if we could have a building or a place where people can come, the community could come and interact and have conversation and recreation and amusement, that that would be a positive thing for the community. And I remember um, my father uh, being part of those conversations. And by him being a founder, which I, I really didn't know what his role was until recently, as far as being one of the, the seven founders, I can see why he told me to give time to uh, come to th this community center, because it was a community effort. Uh, Mr. Burton literally went from door to door asking for donations. And then he encouraged the local farmers who were not here to donate a portion of the profits they made from selling tobacco at tobacco season. So you had this whole idea of involvement with different parts of the community. You had the Brick Masons at that time to dedicate one, a couple of Saturdays a month after enough money was raised to get the supplies. You had the, the big brick masons to volunteer their labor for at least one or two Saturdays out of the month. I know my uncle, Needham McCullers, he was a brick mason. So you had about five or six brick masons who would volunteer their time to, 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 to build the building. And then those of us who were students or who were in school, we came down and we did the labor. We, you know, carried the mortar, we dug the, the, the footings, or we, we did things, or we carried the bricks. We did labor, and my dad directed me that I was going to dedicate a certain number of my hours on Saturday to Pine Acres Community Center. He did not necessarily ask me. He just said, okay, this is what you're going to do. 
So it was, but it was not only me, it was other young men too, men who were in Mr. Burton's class and men who were generally, they were just in the community. So we all would gather here on a Saturday morning and we would work and we would work. I think a lot of times the work ended about two o'clock because the other brick masons, of course, they had their regular jobs and on Saturday they did want to rest some, but that would be the thing that would happen here on a Saturday morning in 62, 63, 64. You'd have young and the old and the brick masons who would come and they would dedicate their time and energy for free. And then you had uh, Mr. Burton and Mr. Rogers asking for donations from the churches, from the local business people, those people who had businesses, and then uh, those who would volunteer based on Mr. Burton literally knocking on their door saying, can you help us do this? And I think that that, for me, during that time is a great example of what I would consider um, self-determination from our community because it had to start because based on all the, at that time, the barriers that were in place, something had to be done. And I feel so fortunate to be able to have benefited from those efforts because this was a, I think you used the term, it was a safe haven for us because we had somewhere to go and we had the adults who supervised and chaperoned us and we were not necessarily, um, we, were, we were not necessarily subjected to a lot of negative stuff that could have taken us out of here. So I think that for me, this story, the story of Pine Acres is such a, a, a great story and to see it still existing today and still being a valuable part of the community, it has broadened its perspective now and people know that this concept that these men had years ago is workable for the entire community. When I say community, I'm talking about the entire town of Fuqua Verena and can be a benefit to everybody because it's, it, Pine Acres fortunately has kept up with the time. It, its mission, its original mission for, for recreation, amusement, for social intercourse, and for I think one of the other tenets that they said was for mental improvement or mental training. All of those three things are being accomplished, but it's being accomplished now from a much broader perspective. So I see that as really honing in on what the real purpose, I think, that the, the original uh, founders of Pine Acres intended to, to, to be about. You know, when the building was first built, of course, it wasn't like it is today. Uh, of course, you didn't have a lot of the uh, amenities you had. I mean, it wasn't air conditioned. There used to be this this um, one, um, I call it a pot belly stove, but it was in the middle of the of the room there. And we teenagers, we would come down on Fridays. They always made sure that the building was open on Fridays. And we would come down, and sometimes weather was like this, but we would come down and we would sit around and sometimes we would just meet and talk, and sometimes they would have music, and we would dance. But we went from that little pot belly stove, as people continued to donate, and as, pe as people continued to have fundraisers and, and make contributions, we went from that to what you see now, and that, of course, the building is, is a, you know, it's comfortable, there's air, it's central heating, uh, those are the kinds of things that I can remember. The dances were, every Friday, every Friday night, there was a little dance going on. And there was a citizen in the community who was dedicated to be here and chaperone us. It's not like we were not chaperoned. Uh, so he would, he would be here on those Fridays. He would come and he would open up the building. And then when we would leave out, and it would, by 10 o'clock it was closed, and we would leave out and go home. But we had that kind of support from the adults in the community to make sure that this place was utilized and that there was a certain a kind of behavior that was going to take place. And for us, it was an outlet and it was a means of recreation for us. So uh, those dances, they went on for several years. Um, Mr. Early Stewart would be the one who would come down 
and he would come down and he had his gallus overalls on and his pipe in his mouth and he, he'd walk around and he wouldn't say anything to anybody and we were scared of him because we just didn't know, nobody wanted to upset Mr. Early, but he was, he was consistent. We knew he would be here, he was consistent. It wasn't a, a time when he just didn't show. He was here, he would open up, we would, we would dance and, and talk and then about the time it was time to go, we look at, and we had to get out of here. But he was consistent. See, that's the kind of stuff that helps mold, mold people, I think, because seeing that consistency in him and seeing the selflessness in him of doing that for us at that particular time. I think Pine Acres still has its true identity based on the original intent of the founders. So yeah, I'm, I'm overjoyed that we're still here and that the, the building has been used in so many different ways for positive activity. I mean, I, I just think that, that, that is, this is what has made uh, Fuquay unique because of what has been allowed to uh, evolve out of Pine Acres community. So, so Pine Acres has opened its doors as originally intended to the entire community. And I think that the, those members who have participated in, as board members and volunteers over the years ought to be commended. And I think that um, those people who have given time and are still given time ought to be commended because this is very, 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 very unique. I don't, I don't know of a lot of other communities who have sustained their identity over the years like Pine Acres and still evolving. So yeah, I'm, I'm just elated, I really am.